This is Wickham in Northamptonshire, which may look to you or me like a typical English village. Over here you've got the posh manor house, you've got the church next to it. But 800 years ago there were two churches and two manor houses, in fact two villages, separated by this little stream. Right here where we are now was Wick Deve, and over here to the south was Wick Hammond. Naturally, the current residents of Wiccan are keen to find out why there were two villages here in the Middle Ages, and they also want to know what happened to the church and the other bits and pieces of Wick Hammond that have long since gone. They also want to know which was here first. But understandably, they're very keen to establish who's got the oldest bit of the village in their back garden. Time Team have been invited here to investigate the origins of two English villages, and as usual, we've got just three days to dig up the answers. with history, the village of Wiccan is situated about five miles away from the very modern town of Milton Keynes. But we're not the only ones invited to investigate the two medieval villages that once existed here. There's already a research dig going on run by Cardiff and Leicester universities. Richard, you've already got a university dig here. Why are we here? There's just so much archaeology in this village. We're looking at one particular area. We've put little test pits in in other parts of the village, and everywhere we go, there's archaeology in the ground. And so I'm really pleased that the village has called you in. So we need your help. Where are you looking, first of all? Uh, we're concentrating at the moment on a manor house site in Wickhamon. And what are we going to do? Well, there's the church in this area here. We know roughly where it is. The farmer's got lots of boulders and stuff in the field, but we don't precisely know where it is. Then in Wick Deve over here, we've got the church and the manor house and an area of earthworks here that need looking at in Warren Field. It's full of earthworks, look. And you, you've got a certain amount of information for this, but we need to do an area excavation to understand what that is. So the hunt's on to see which village has the earliest origins. And our target area here in Wick Deve is potentially really exciting. Test pits dug in this field have turned up Saxon pottery dating way back to the 9th century. Meanwhile, our second site in Wick Hammond couldn't be more different. Here we're searching for a medieval church, thought to be in this field somewhere, but we're hoping to find out if the church was built on an earlier religious site. We're digging two villages, and in order not to confuse you or ourselves, we had this great idea, which was that we would put all the people who were working in one village in one coloured T-shirt and all the people who were working in the other one in another coloured T-shirt. But that plan collapsed on us when the two team leaders adamantly refused in a fit of fashion paranoia not to wear the <laughs> T-shirts. Uh, Yellow's not my colour, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Queenie. <laughs> Which village are you digging? I'm doing Wick Deve. And Wick Deve means? Well, it's the name of the people who lived here. The William de Deve came to hold the manor of uh, 1242, and that's what gave the village its name. And what do you hope to find in Wick Deve? Well, I think we're going to find the, the earlier origins. I mean, that's the medieval period, but I think we could go back much earlier and maybe find, find a planned settlement of the 9th century. That's what I'm hoping. And Giorgio Armani, <laughs> your village is? Wick Hammond. As Bridget's got so gloriously here. What does Hammond mean? Uh, it's, the, it's the name of the hold of the estate, in this case, uh, the 12th century. Um, but it must go back earlier. And what I want Bridget you to find me is some nice Anglo-Saxon evidence for the earlier settlement here. Uh, Why Sam should think that he has any right to fashion <laughs> paranoia? He's hiding this hat. Any hat is better back. than no hat in this weather. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed there, but they started talking more about the Saxon origins of the village, because originally, before they split into two, the theory is that there was only one village called Wick, but hopefully Mick will be able to explain more about that to me later on. So Helen's team are going to be working in Wick Deve, where Stuart has been mapping the lumps and bumps. He reckons most of the bigger earthworks are likely to be 15th century and to do with the manor house but can he see any trace of anything that could be earlier? 
What is interesting about the earthworks, if you filter off all the obvious stuff, yeah. there is kind of a background noise of subtle earthworks. Show me a subtle earthwork. Right. <laughs> Mission, Mission Impossible, that's in there. <laughs> this is a game I've played with Stuart before. The ground rises up very slightly. Is it, is it just, just here? That's it, yeah, it's just right... Slight earthworks are very difficult to see, but, as usual, he's got ideas on where we should oh, dig. Oh. My feeling is, if we're looking for background noise that's pre-manor, then we mm. ought to be looking in this corner. But this is here. the same area that you've got the early pottery down in this corner, isn't it? It does seem that all the evidence is coming together and pointing so I reckon, this corner. Mm -hmm. I reckon we want an area down in that Do corner, that. don't we? Mm. So our first trench in search of the origins of Wick Deve is going in over one of Stuart's subtle earthworks and in an area that's also turned up Saxon pottery. Over at Wick Hammon, Sam wants to get on with finding the village's missing church, a building that was pulled down in the 17th century. Stuart, who's much in demand this morning, has found an old map he thinks will help. 1717 it's dated. Uh, there's the villagers there. And you can see this little parcel in there, which is yep. quite difficult to read at that yep. scale. But if you blow it up, oh, look what yes. it says. The old churchyard, which I think might, might be a bit of a clue. Yeah. Might be, <laughs> it might, might be, yeah. And it also shows a building just there, mm -hmm. which I'm confident is that barn behind Splendid. us. Oh, yes, that looks appropriate. So this, this map doesn't show the church at all, but it does give us the area of the churchyard, which is actually over there under where the crop is. So it's in here somewhere, but where exactly? John's talking to the farmer, who reckons he can narrow down the search. This is a very light field, this, particularly this end of the field. Yeah. But there's a patch, you can see a ridge just across here well, where the, the crop is tall, a little bit yeah. higher. And when we work the field, there is masses of stone there. Big stone, like that. OK, well, I'll arrange for the machine to come in and we'll take as small an area as possible. Yes, that's accepted. That's what we've agreed. So the business of clearing the crop gets underway in Wick Hammond. Basically, all we need to do is flatten the wheat so that Geophys can get in to do their survey. And given we're only clearing a relatively small area, we shouldn't have to wait long to get their first results. Over at Wick Deve, we're opening up a second trench and turning up a lot of 13th century pottery. Oh! Yeah. Clearly, there were people living here in medieval times. Here you go. I think that looks a bit oh, better. Oh, yeah, that's the stuff. There's some big old pieces. Yeah, oh, yeah. And where's this coming from? Pottersbury, just up the road. It's called Pottersbury because it was full of potters. It's been <laughs> in the medieval times. There's been about 20 kilns excavated there, and it's only a little village, but it's stuffed full of pottery kilns. Back at Wick Hammon, geophys are ready to reveal the first ever picture of this village's long lost church. I mean, it's not a clear footprint of a church. Oh, yeah. But I mean, there's Definitely a building here. And it looks to uh, me as if there's lots of rubble over there. Yes. I mean, do you think you can find the division between the nave and the chancel? Yeah. Hang on, that's which bit's what? The chancel's the bit the eastern bit with the altar in. Yeah. And then there's usually an arch, and there's a bigger bit, the nave for the congregation. Yeah. But since ch churches tend to alter around that chancel arch, it's a good place to, to try and locate. Well, that's where we want to go. Well, it looks to me as if you might have the sort of chancel coming out here and the rest of it back there. So, yeah, if you can drop us on that. The earliest documentary reference for this church is in 1218, but with no clue to when it was actually built, hopefully this trench will tell us that, and most importantly, if it was built on the site of an earlier Saxon church. A church was an essential part of any medieval or Saxon manor. Richard, if I was a lord of the manor here in the Middle Ages, how would I have gone about getting a church built? Would I have to ask anybody? You just ask permission from the bishop just to get, you know, a permission to actually have a place of worship. But then after that, you can do what you like. And how would I have gone about getting a design together? Depends how much money you've got. If you've got lots of money, you can get the best masons in the country. They could build you a church, no matter what size it is, to the latest styles. If you're just using a local chap, then he would just use the local design of church, and that could be quite conservative in design. In Wick Deve, the church and manor house still exist today, although both were completely rebuilt in the 17th century. What we're looking for in Warren Field is evidence of where the earliest villagers lived, and Phil's keeping his eyes peeled for even the smallest bit of evidence. 
Oh, Helen. You got something? <laughs> oh, wow. I can't believe you spotted that. <laughs> oh, that's oh. better. Look at that. Like a little pin, isn't it's it? It's absolutely little... minute or a, la a lace end. Oh, yes. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Is that well, well spotted, well Phil? Done. That's amazing. It is. It's a lace end. You know, like just like oh. the, uh, just like that on my on, the end of on your my shoe. shoelace. Yes, but it's going. You can date these. Are you really an expert on absolute rubbish? I mean, how would you possibly know about dating lace ends? Nobody could know that. <laughs> well, you have to do everything in my line of work. <laughs> and there are plenty of other metal finds that have survived surprisingly well. There's a few nice ones. 17th century royal farthing token, 18th century halfpenny from Ireland, but this one's the best. That is a medieval buckle, probably 13th, 14th century, and look how it shines. It really does. It shines, doesn't it? Shines. It shines! Yeah. And you can see how it's been made on the back, there's the file marks. It's, been, it's a nice little thing, it's well made. Mick's keen to widen our search for Saxon material in the village, and he's gone off to see if he can get permission to dig test pits in a few back gardens. It must be this one. Yeah. I'd better ask the boss. Uh, <laughs> go on, then. Can you show, on, us, sure. show us your garden and we can have a look okay. at it? Thanks. You know the idea, we just dig a one-by-one one metre pit to see what yep. sort of pottery and stuff no you've got, yep. and, uh, you know, that'll tell us a lot about the way the village has developed. I mean, do you mind us disturbing your grass? We'll be as careful as we can. That's OK. Anything, anywhere. Well, I mean, if you take this family have already collected a few finds and stored them near the stream that was once the boundary between the two villages. Yeah, the stream's virtually dried up, isn't it? Yeah, it does. I mean, in the winter, that'll actually flow over that pipe or about six or seven inches. So. Really? Yeah. yeah. So Quite this is our stream, isn't it, Mick? Yeah, but the... you can't believe yeah. it. It's all dried up right the way yeah. through, you know. Yeah. These are the stones. Oh, yes, that, that right. The is on, and it over small bits of but I mean, that looks like a building stone. Yeah, it's good. So that, yeah, so that's very good news. That yeah. suggests you might have had a building or a house on the site originally. Yeah. So, well, that so. was under, there used to be a garage there, and yeah. that was uh, under the base. My yeah. wife dug all that out by hand. Meanwhile, over here in Wick Hammon, I'm trying to get permission for more test pits, and the garden of this house seems to be perfect. Oh, nice oh, house. <laughs> What a beautiful pool, Tony. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> You're lucky in this weather. Wow. It goes on for miles. It just keeps on going, even in that direction. On and on and on. Well, um, I think we're going to need to consult about where best to put it. But you wouldn't mind, provided we don't do it over there, that we put something in there. It would only be little. Yeah, that's fine. Anywhere. This garden is especially interesting because it's got a curved boundary round it and it's just next to our church site in Wick Hammon. We're approaching the end of the day now, but I'm keen to see how we're getting on unearthing a church that was last seen way back in 1619. Raksha, you've got something. Yeah, we're starting to see something eventually. We have these rather substantial stones here and then if you look at these two, they're faced off, so... So could that be the outside wall of the church? It'd be part of it, certainly. Not all of it, but part of it. What do you mean, part of it? It'd be wider than that. Well, we should find out tomorrow if this is the outer wall, but at least we're getting clear wall edges that even I can see. Whereas over in Wick Deve, the various phases of archaeology are much more difficult to make out. Nearly at the end of day one, we put this trench in because we were looking for evidence of the very first buildings in Wick Deve. But so far, we've got lots and lots of pottery finds, but absolutely no structures whatsoever. And the same's true in this trench over here. Lots of rubble, lots of pottery finds, but no structures. Paul, Hello. what does the pottery tell us? Well, we've got a really, really nice sequence of pottery going from before the Norman Conquest through to the medieval period. Most of it is the high medieval, quite big pieces. And then we've got this, um, fragment of a Nottingham night jug, probably about this big originally, something like that. The really unusual in this part of the world would have had sort of models of knights in armour with shields and what have you attached to it. Um, very unusual. The interesting thing is, in the background, underneath all this sort of um, high medieval pottery, we've got a little scatter of lots of small pieces of earlier stuff. Ah! Now, a lot of this dates to around about the Norman Conquest, let's say 1050, plus or minus 50. And we've got one little bit here. If you squint really hard, you could push that back to about 900. 
Definitely 900. <laughs> <laughs> this is so frustrating. We've got this Anglo-Saxon pottery, which takes us back to something like 150 years before William the Conqueror arrived, but no Saxon structures. Hopefully, we'll find them tomorrow. Also tomorrow, virgin territory. We're going to go to a lot of people's back gardens where no one's ever dug before and start putting in holes. I love it when we do that. Beginning of day two here at Wickham in Northamptonshire, where we're looking for the origins of the village. Actually, it's a bit more complicated than that because in the Middle Ages it was split into two villages. You had Wick Deve here, where we are now, and then a little stream, and then Wick Hammon over here. So far here in Wick Deve, we've had some Anglo Saxon pottery out of that field and some mysterious earthworks, but as yet no structures, so we're going to keep on digging here. But the most exciting part of the day for me is that we're adopting a test pit strategy, which means we're going to dig lots of little holes all over the village. And in order to do that, we've recruited an army of volunteers who Mick and Richard are now briefing. We're putting in test pits in both Wick Deve and Wick Hammond. Don't assume, because it doesn't look interesting, that it is, isn't. You know, if any doubts at all, keep it. The worry is that they might not recognise Saxon pottery. It basically looks like dog biscuits, yeah. <laughs> but terribly important. You know. The test pits will only be one metre square, but they'll help to build up a picture of where people were living in medieval and Saxon times. Our test pits are going in on gardens coloured green on this map. But I'm wondering if we really need any more, because all these red dots record test pits already dug by Cardiff University. But I mean, you always do need more, because the finer the number that you've got, the more you can see the variations in different parts of the village. This is the area that I found so frustrating last night. Well, why did you find that frustrating? Well, because we've got loads and loads of finds from it and absolutely no Anglo-Saxon structures. If you'd have stayed around a bit longer and not skived <laughs> off as you did, you would have actually been aware that we actually found post holes last night. Really? In that trench, there are post holes. <laughs> and is there any way of dating those? Not at the moment. But, 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 but the potential in that trench is enormous. So are we going to put test pits in this field as well? No, no, no we're more going, test pits we've got enough test pits in the field up to tell us what there is there. Oh, you can't have too many test pits. No, you, <laughs> you, you can't, that's true. The plan for Warren Field is to open two more trenches to give us a bigger window on the areas where the test pits turned up Saxon pottery. The theory is that this area may have been the early centre of Wick Deve, and I'm hoping Phil's post holes belong to a Saxon building, but we'll have to wait for him to dig them to find out. A mere 400 metres away, we're also digging the site of a medieval church in what was once the village of Wick Hammon. Churches are often built on older religious sites, and I'm hoping that we might discover that Wick Hammon has some early Saxon history as well. Taking a look from the helicopter, Stuart can see dark lines showing up very clearly in the wheat field. There is a crop mark of an enclosure coming out from that hedge line. Oh, yes, see it I going see. Out, yeah, yeah. And then it turns an angle. Now, that's quite interesting. You see it now quite yeah, clearly, can't you? Yeah, there, and then... Is that the churchyard? I think that's the extent of the churchyard, yeah. Stuart's hoping to piece together the layout of both medieval villages over the next few days. While down on the ground at the church site, there's a puzzle of medieval walls to make sense of. This morning, Raksh has discovered that the outer wall of the building isn't here, as we thought yesterday, but where she's digging now. Now we've got this great big whopping wall coming, running through here. The footings were often fossilised in a church. If, even if the church was demolished and rebuilt, you'd often reuse the same footings. It just makes sense. So if we can bottom out the footings, maybe we'll find phasing there. One of Raksha's main jobs now will be to dig down alongside the outer wall to see if it's been built on the foundations of an earlier church. Meanwhile, over at Wick Deve, Matt's got some good news about one of our new trenches. We've got a ditch. You can see the edge of it coming along here. Um, we've just got to the bottom of it here. It's about 20 centimetres deep. So we've got one side there. Unfortunately, the other side is just beyond the section here, so I think I'll have to extend this a little bit just to get the full width of it. 
Even better, we've got some pottery to date it. Isn't that fantastic? It's 10th century. It's exactly what we're looking for. It's um, near to where it's the classic late Saxon pottery in this part of the world. But it's early days yet. We don't know if it is a ditch until we extend the trench to find the other edge of it. But we do have our first really good evidence of people living around here in Saxon times. Which way around does this go? It's the rim's in turn, so it's kind of like that. And how deep is it? Oh, maybe three inches at the most. Oh, quite, quite small. Yeah. And, and how wide? Uh, in a bit, in a bit. Yeah, about that probably. So sort of shepherd's pie size. Oh yeah, they're quite small. You do sometimes get them with um, sockets in the side that you could put wooden handles in and use them as frying pans. At Wick Hammond, the diggers are relishing this rare opportunity to uncover the history of a church. And happily, there's no shortage of finds. I had to get you over here because I'm quite excited by these little finds that are coming up. Look, there's glass here coming up, typical medieval glass. The way it's corroded, it looks like what I would, I would consider window glass. But more excitingly, next to it, I found this really intriguing object. And the only thing I've ever seen like it is medieval spectacle rims. Mm. But bring me down to earth if I'm going too far. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it except a <laughs> pair of glasses. And it, in fact, it's even got that the, the indent on the inside to, to hold the, the, the lens. Absolutely. Well, there's an insert there for something to fit in. There's a decoration on the side there, which either has an attachment or it could be a hinge. Wow. But, I mean, that's fine workmanship. Wow. I don't know. Found next to that bit of glass. Could someone drop the spectacles? <laughs> With help from graphics, we can show what these bone spectacles may have looked like. They're a rare find, and likely to date to the 15th or early 16th century. Helen! What are you doing here? I thought you were supposed to be over at Wick D. But it's Raksha's end of the trench that's got everybody excited. Why? What have we got, Raksha? Well, I decided to extend the trench because we wanted to see whether we could find any earlier phases of the wall. And as we were going down, we seem to have found a burial. A burial? Yeah. You can see this soft material here, which is the fill of the grave, and this is quite hard, and you can see the cut just going all the way around. We found some ribs popping up here. There's a bit of a clavicle, which is this bone just here. But the really interesting thing about it is that it's north-south aligned. And it's underneath that wall there? Yeah, it's underneath the wall. So it's earlier than the wall. When do we think the wall is? Well, we think that this church complex is about 13th century. So what's the big deal about it being north-south? Well, most medieval burials are supposed to be west-east. You have your head to the west and your body to the east. And that's, that's true for the vast majority of the medieval period. But the further you go back into the Anglo-Saxon period, life is not so simple. They, don't, they haven't quite made a decision about exactly how they should be burying each other. And sometimes you do get these anomalous, weird burials. And I think this might be one of them. So this could be really early? I this think could it be could be really early, yes. Mid-Saxon or yeah. whatever. These three bits of 12th century pottery came from on top of the burial, but what we need now is to find some in the grave to date it. So is that what you're going to do now? Well, we first have to clean the wall, get rid of the wall, because we're obviously digging stratigraphically like a good archaeologist would, and then we'll have to deal with the burial. Well, I know you're not allowed to hurry, <laughs> but can you do the thing that our archaeologists do that's like hurrying? OK. <laughs> <laughs> The discovery of a burial actually under a wall is more than we could have hoped for. It should help to date the construction of the wall, and better still, it could be proof that we found evidence of a Saxon settlement here in Wickhamon as well. But typically, just as I start to get excited, I'm given the bad news from Wick Dave. Not only has our ditch turned out to be a pit, but Matt's discovered medieval pottery in it, suggesting it was dug in the 12th century rather than in Saxon times. Where's these post holes you were so pleased with then? No. Phil's got news too. He's finished digging his post holes, and they too are part of the medieval history of Wick Dive. One there, and one there. And they're actually quite interesting for showing just how difficult these, it is to perhaps pick up these post holes. You see, this one is pretty obvious because you've got this very dark fill contrasting with this white material. Sure. And then this one, well, it's absolutely massive. Look, if I pop my hand down in there, look, it's as deep as that. And we've got a nice piece of 13th century pottery. So I think there's a good chance that we're definitely back into the 13th century. 
These post holes clearly held big, substantial timbers, but it's hard to make sense of them without extending the trench. It's all complicated soil stains and post holes, apart from one feature that even I can see. And this is actually a wall. Now, if you follow up through here, you can project it right the way through here, and when you get to here, it forms a right angle with these big earthworks of the manorial complex. These are walls likely to have been put in by the manor and connected with the later use of this field. If there's any evidence surviving of earlier occupation, it'll be buried deeper down. But I'm beginning to wonder if there is a Saxon settlement here. To me, the best evidence of Saxon activity is down at the church site, where we've got our burial. But the archaeologists aren't giving up in Warren Field, and they, of course, are pleased to be adding to the medieval story of Wickdeve. All the evidence suggests that in the 13th century, this field contained numerous wooden houses fronting onto the road close to the manor house and church. Then it appears these houses were all cleared away when the Lord of Wickdeve extended the grounds around the manor sometime in the 15th century. As well as adding to the picture of medieval Wickdeve, we also want to work out the layout of medieval Wickhammon. We've already managed to locate the exact position of the church, and we're learning all sorts of details about what it looked like. Oh, wow. Look at that. Isn't that an amazing decoration? That is fabulous. You can imagine, there must have been four of them there, curving around the circle. It's quite fancy, no matter where it is, isn't it? I mean, that, we haven't found anything else like that in the trees. No, we haven't. That's amazing. Stuart now wants to find the missing manor house of Wickhammon and he's interested to see the relationship between the church and the medieval buildings discovered here in the four-week dig being carried out by Cardiff and Leicester universities. Oh, Richard, this is impressive. It is impressive, but also complicated and much easier to appreciate by looking at Victor's drawing. Essentially, what they've discovered are two medieval buildings dating to 1250 AD. The first is a combined bakehouse and brew house, while the second structure is a beautifully built dovecot. This we... is spectacular. Uh, we're looking now down into a rather fine dovecot. Wow. So you've actually got some pigeon holes on the left-hand side there. We've got the remnants of two uh, uh, rows of, of pigeon holes with the little ledges where the birds could uh, <laughs> yeah, land. Yeah. Mick, that's really substantial, it isn't it? It is fantastic, isn't so it? So what does that yeah. tell us? Well, presumably we're near a manorial complex or something like that? I think we're in the manorial farm. Uh, right. Lords have a monopoly on the keeping of doves and the brewing of ale. Yeah. So we're very much close to the Lord yeah. here, I think. But do you think this is the manorial complex itself? Because I mean, I've been looking at the, the layout of the village and the boundaries around it. The dovecot is over here and the church is over here. They seem quite a long way apart for this to be within the manorial enclosure. After analysing all the maps, Stuart reckons this curving boundary is a clue that the manor house was situated here. This would make sense as it would put the manor house and the church close together as they are in Wickdeve. It's possible that the dovecot and the brew house were kept separate as a kind of little industrial unit. This is the first time anyone's ever been able to picture the two manors of Wickhammon and Wickdeve together. And thanks to the detail coming from the trenches, we're getting a real insight into the lifestyle of the Lord of the Manor. I mean, it's obvious that the, the oven is capable of baking, I don't know, 50 or 100 loads of bread at once. Yeah. And, you know, they're, they're capable of probably brewing 50 gallons of ale yeah. at a time. And so, so it's on. not a one family uh, job. Well, it's it? for a household. What about the doves? Well, the, the doves are a high status food. Uh, you, the great legend is that they kept doves in order to eat them in the winter when you could only got salt meat. It was a source of fresh meat in the winter. Nonsense. <laughs> all, the, all the household accounts we have show them eating doves between May and October. Uh, it's a summer it's food, summer food because yeah. what they eat are the young, the young squabs. Oh, you the see. squabs. They yeah. go and they climb up ladders inside the inside the dovecot and they uh, they take the young before they've flown. <laughs> With the day almost over, there's just time to water the trenches and the archaeologists, while Mick and I check the progress in our test pits. How are you getting on with the test pits, mate? Yeah, pretty good. I've been round them all now, and most of them are producing medieval pottery. 
It's all pretty much Pottersbury ware, sort of 1250, 1300 onwards. There's a few bits of earlier stuff, maybe 12th century, but nothing before that. They're all ongoing. I mean, you know, some are deeper than others. Some are only about 20 centimetres deep, some are about 40 centimetres deep. I think you should knock off now. It's late, it's hot. We'll do the rest tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow, as they go deeper, they'll turn up some Saxon evidence. A lot of us are, you see, aren't you? Yeah. End of day two, and it's been a great day, particularly given how hard it's been to dig in this heat. We still haven't found any Anglo-Saxon structures, but Phil's got an idea for one more trench at Wick Dive, so fingers crossed. The big news today, though, has been the church just over the road and this mysterious burial underneath it. We're having to dig very slowly and very carefully because it's very fragile and possibly very important archaeology, and hopefully tomorrow... We'll find out exactly what it is. Cheers. Beginning of day three here at Wiccan in Northamptonshire, where we're looking for the origins of two villages, Wick Dive up here where we are, and Wick Hammond down here. All these red dots are test pits that were put in before we arrived. Yesterday, these yellow squares are test pits that we put in. Lots of geophys. And here was the big triumph. We found the foundations of a church in Wick Hammond with a grave cut underneath, which could be Saxon. So maybe we've got the origins of that village there. But here, this is so frustrating. This is called the Warren Field. And um, we were looking for structures over here, possibly Saxon. We found absolutely nothing. And then this morning, just when we arrived, Ian had started whipping off the topsoil over here with his digger, so presumably there's another trench going in miles from where we've done all the other excavation. Mick? It's not actually miles from where we've done oh, it. Oh, miles, it's a television term, it means yards. <laughs> it's, it's here, look, so it's, it's another one round the field. But Richard, I thought all the finds that we'd had <laughs> were over here. We've, we've had a change of strategy. We put in these trenches where I've been finding the early material, but we can't relate that to anything structural. It may be that they're not living there, but throwing material into their backyards. So we're going somewhere which seems clean, that doesn't have uh, evidence. Let me get this clear. You're putting it in a trench because of the absence of evidence. Yeah. It's crazy, I know. <laughs> but, I mean, you don't have rubbish in your house, do you? You go and put it in the bin, you don't live on top of it, so it might just work. Not in Phil's house. <laughs> no, oh, 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 what do you know about my home? <laughs> it's covered in flint flakes. Yeah, but that's important, though, isn't it? <laughs> so what else are we going to do today? Then at the church site, yeah. we're going to put a couple of sections in. While Mick's excited about digging up the medieval church in Wick Hammond, I can't wait to find out more about the burial we've discovered, situated here, actually under the wall of the church. Yesterday you were getting really excited. You said you thought there was the possibility that they could be as early as 7th century, something like that. Is there still that possibility? Yeah. Well, it was always a bit of a long shot. They're very unusual burials, but I think looking at it more, it, the, possibly the likelihood is less because we've got more than one individual, disarticulated, nothing in situ, and I'm even beginning to wonder about the grave cut. Oh, why do archaeologists always do this? You get really excited about something, then you back away from it, <laughs> step by step. I'm a bit more depressed this morning than I was last night. Oh, pull yourself together. <laughs> Helen's worry is that we might not have discovered an in situ burial under the wall of the church. So far, we've found no trace of a skull, and they could just be random bones. Digging graves is a slow process, but with less than a day to go, hopefully we'll get an answer soon. But there's a lot more to this trench than just old bones. We're discovering all sorts of details about the history of this church. Look, wow, look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I mean, these tiles are really small. In fact, they're actually smaller than some of those decorated tiles that we've had, which suggests an earlier phase of floor. They are very small. I've seen them small in a, in a sort of church environment. They're tiny. But it's not just in the trenches that we're uncovering the forgotten history of Wiccan. Stuart's been making some important discoveries of his own about the village green, and the large garden belonging to the rectory. I sometimes get the feeling at the beginning of day three that we've been summoned yeah. by Stuart. <laughs> to be told what's going on. <laughs> Stuart spotted on an old map that these two areas were both covered in houses that have been cleared away since the map was drawn in 1717. And what they've done is just cleared all those properties away to create a large garden and they're diverting the stream to put 
ponds in there. It's a piece of ornamental landscape in Silay Garden. Mm. It's just like when they used to build the Stanley homes. That's yeah. right, get rid of the peasants. Well, it's, it's, it's a mini yeah. one, isn't it? It's, it's, a, is. it's a mini, mini park, really, That's right. is what they're doing. Yeah. Well, the thing the biggest surprise, though, is that Stuart reckons this stream wasn't the boundary between the two villages in medieval times. I can't see any evidence on this map at all of a stream going through here. You can see it over here, you know, it's shown really quite clearly, and a curvy boundary here which might reflect it, but there's nothing in here which shows that the stream formed this, came through this part of the village. In fact, the layout of the village is actually quite regular over here, and I think the road is more likely to be part of the structure and division between the, the two, two villages. So, in earlier times, this road continued like this and was probably the boundary between the two villages. Geophys have already surveyed the rectory gardens, so with permission from the owner, we're opening up a test pit here. But this road um, continues, you, you d continued in the past on through your garden and, and it's got properties coming off it, coming down the hill here, and we've no idea what date they are at all. So what we're doing here is we're putting in a little tiny test bit and we'll sieve it to get any pottery out and hopefully that will tell us what date the properties that have been here actually are. Sadly, our last trench in Wickdeve has failed to find any Saxon evidence or indeed anything. We're going to close down our trenches here and Phil will go over to the church dig at Wickhammon where we've got some breaking news. You've caught us at the most exciting moment. We think we've found... Uh, we think we found at least part of a skull in the grave cut. And the other thing that's really exciting is we've just extended the trench, out of the machining came a piece of pottery. Paul has dated that to Maxiware, 650 to 750. Oh, that's fantastic. That's the early stuff we've got then. I know it is beginning to raise the possibility that there, there is activity including burials on this site right from the Middle Saxon period. Point of clarification, are you the same archaeologist who was so miserable around the <laughs> the <laughs> Yeah, now I'm the one who's jumping up and down with delight. <laughs> Fantastic. We have got an in situ burial and it could be 1,300 years old, although it has been disturbed by later building on this site. We've got this grave cut here. The skull would have been just under the wall here, oh. but as you can see, because they were building the wall, they've messed around with it, and the skull has actually travelled down to here. None of the bones are articulated, they're, they're just a jumbled mess. And here we have some of the teeth. That's hardly worn at all, that's no. like a juvenile or a young adult, yeah. isn't it? The piece of maxi wear, this lovely little chunk, that, that actually came out of the machining from just a little bit further away from, from here. So it's a, a, a couple of metres from the burial. Shows activity happening in the same area, but doesn't actually date it, can't really be related to it. Mm. Sorry if I got your hopes up earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Ideally, what we need is to find more pottery in the grave to precisely date the burial. This bit comes from a pot that would have looked something like this. And surely it's an encouraging sign that there was something going on here in Saxon times. We've only got a few hours left to find out, so it's just as well that we're starting to make sense of the medieval church. We wanted to find the junction between the nave, where the congregation stood, and the chancel, where the altar was, and it looks like we've found it. The basic plan, as we understand it, looks like this. We've got a church that was enlarged at various times and orientated east-west as normal. However, rather than having burials parallel with the building, we've discovered a grave orientated north-south and under the wall of the medieval building. The betting is that it's a Saxon burial, but can we prove it? I'm hoping we've at last found the oldest bit of this village, the original Saxon settlement that would have been called Wick. This is an old English word, but I'm not sure exactly what it means. Uh, it's a word borrowed from the Latin vicus, uh, so it becomes Wick in Old English, and it must mean adjacency to some kind of Roman site. It's like vicus, isn't it? Exactly. Vicus, it, yeah. it is the anglicisation yeah, of yeah. vicus. Oh, we've dug a few of those. They're like kind of little satellite settlements yeah. next to a fortress. But I, th I think it's that next to that's the, the critical bit. Subsidiary next to. to, isn't it? And we've got that in, in, in Wiccan. In which sense? Well, there's a, there is a, a, a scatter of Roman pottery to the south of the, of the, the current village oh. that is the Roman settlement. That, that presumably the, the wick was next to. So this area might have been the original wick settlement that later became Wick Hammond. 
There could even have been a Saxon church here because we've now discovered another burial close to the one Raksha's digging and once again it seems to be underneath the walls of the medieval church. This is turning out to be a spectacular trench. The medieval finds alone are enough to impress the farmer who normally works this field. And lots of lovely small metal finds. Quite yeah. incredible that you can find these. Well, these were with the help of the metal detectorists. Um, and we've got some rather wonderful things. I mean, this is just a pin, but when you're in a churchyard, it's almost certainly a shroud pin. And then we've got a coin. This is a halfpenny of one of the Henrys uh, from the London Mint, probably uh, Henry VI, uh, sometime in the 15th century. But this is the most interesting. It's like a hinge. It is like a hinge, yes. When you turn it over, you can see it's got a little hole in the bottom. Now, that would have fitted on, on a strap on the cover of a book, and this would have fitted over a peg on the other cover. And on, through the hinge, you'd have put a cord, so you could have pulled it off to open your book. And this dome stops it, stops the leather cover from rubbing on the wood of the shelf or the lectern. And in its heyday, this church would have been well attended and a very important meeting point for the area. For the whole village, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it would have been absolutely the heart of the village. Oh, absolutely. Mick wants to work out what the interior of the medieval church looked like. He reckons he's standing here, just in front of the altar. You can see you've got this little wall here mm. that then turns yes. and goes along there. Yes. And you've got the same sort of that what stone there, that one along there. A mirror image of it. Yeah. Mm. And I wonder if this, in fact, is not the chancel arch with the screen in it. Yes, yes. And as you step into mm. the chancel here with the floor, you've got yes. perhaps wooden floors on there with seats on. Yes. Because you know, the, the stones are foundations for uh, horizontal timbers, yeah. which will have carved yeah. timbers on them. And then in the middle you've got this paving. Mm. I mean, it's very rough. Well, it could, it could be a tomb, wouldn't it? It could be a tomb in the centre of the I mean, this is castle. where the most important person would be That's buried. That's right, yes. I mean, here's the, here are Hammond would be buried. Ah, right. You know, one the founder of the, of the church. The lord, the lord of the manor yeah. and the founder yeah. of the church. It'd be just the right place for it. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's, it's on a small scale, isn't it? But it's very elaborate and complicated. I mean, they, yeah. they put a lot of work and effort and expense into this building. It's not often we've got two professors on hand to decipher such complicated archaeology. And then there's going to be a door mm, mm. probably on that wall coming into that, isn't it? Because if we imagine this to be the 13th century, there actually wouldn't be much seating in there. No, they'd uh, be standing up, wouldn't they? That's right, yeah. yeah. This is Mick's attempt to show the view from the altar, and this is Victor's version. Although a lot more digging would be needed to get the full story, Mick reckons we know enough to picture the church when it was first built in the 12th century. Usually the tower's added later in the sequence, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So by the time we put the tower on, I think that would have side aisles. And this is how we think it looked before it was pulled down in the 17th century. Although the focus is now very much on the church here in Wick Hammond, there's still the job of sorting out all the information gleaned from our various test pits. Essentially, what we've been doing is adding lots of new information to the archaeological map such as the lost road and buildings discovered here in the rectory gardens. Well, nearly everything from this test pit's medieval. It's the uh, Pottersbury again, uh, mid-13th to 14th. We didn't find any trace of Saxon history in these back gardens, but the medieval pottery finds add to the picture of how the village of Wickdeve expanded around 1200 AD. Yeah, I mean, it all seems to me from the pottery the same date along this entire block. I mean, I can't imagine that these things just you know, sprung up simultaneously by accident, certainly. Right. So. It strikes me that we might have a bit of village planning going on here in Wickdeve. It was always a tall order to find the origins of two villages in three days, but with time running out now, I'm desperate to know if we have found the earliest focus for settlement here at the church site in Wickhammon. For the last day and a half, we've been getting really excited about this burial here up against this wall. But it now seems that there's another burial on the other side of the wall. And Helen, on the roller coaster of emotion she's been on for the last two and a half days, is now as excited about this as she was about that earlier. Why? 
This is a fantastic thing because it's stratigraphically in much the same position as that. It's earlier than this wall and it's in fantastically good nick. So what can you tell from it, Jackie? We've got parts of three individuals in here. The, the bone that you can see that's articulated here, you see the, the, the leg bones coming down and the toe bones down here, that's, that's a neonate, a newborn baby, and that was in situ. But we've also got redeposited bone next to it of, a, of probably an infant of about four years old. And then over here, if I just bring this across, that's redeposited bone of a juvenile of about seven or eight years old. So we've got some in situ bone, but we've also got redeposited bone that was probably disturbed and redeposited here during the insertion of these two walls, mm. so we know that they're earlier than the walls. I don't want to fling us all into a panic, but are these burials north, south or east, west? <laughs> the only great thing is they're the right way round. It's, uh, it's east, west, head at the west and legs at the east. Which still leaves this one over here out on its own. Yeah, but then you see, if they do date to this very early period of, um, of the Middle Saxon period, then you can have a huge variety of burial practice. They don't all have to be north, south, or all, all west, east. They can be, they can be, well, anything they like almost. So, what can we tell the villagers at the end of our three-day dig? Thanks ever so much for inviting us in. It's been an extraordinarily good dig. Essentially, they wanted to know what is the oldest part of their village and which came first, Wick Dive or Wick Hammon. Well, the answer, purely in terms of our finds, must be Wick Hammon. We found Saxon pottery there dating to around 650 AD. Not only that, but we discovered burials under the walls of the medieval church that could be Saxon. These now need to be radiocarbon dated, but if they are Saxon, it suggests two possibilities. One, that there was originally a Saxon church on this site with burial plots around it. With a medieval church built on top, it would be hard for us to detect. Or it could be that there was a dispersed Saxon settlement around here, typically a few wooden houses, people living around the ruins of a Roman settlement. It seems likely then to me that this area around the church was the original Wick settlement that later became Wick Hammon while the earliest pottery finds in Wickdeve suggests it got going later in the 9th century. Of course, the archaeologists will tell you the story of these two villages is much more complicated. But undeniably, Wickdeve and Wickhammon happily coexisted in medieval times before they were merged together in 1587 to become the village we know today as Wickham. They're on a mission to unearth Britain's history. Tony Robinson and the team dish the dirt on digging up the past. Press text page 410. Coming up next on 4, a young brickie thinks he's died and gone to heaven when he arrives on one of the islands and meets the girls of shipwrecks. 